at the campus of National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, mm -hmm. you know, which is a constituent institute of the Indian Council of Agriculture and Research. And this National Gene Bank here at this location, as you can see, was established in 1996. While we have been storing some of these germplasm right from 1985 onwards, but however, in 1996, with the help of US aid, we were able to constitute uh, this kind of a National Gene Bank here, you know, um, at the NBPGR, uh, wherein we have stored uh, some large number of accessions or lines of different agri-horticultural crops. For example, this is today the third largest gene bank in the world with over 4 lakh accessions, over mm -hmm. 0 0.4 million accessions, mm -hmm. which belong to so many different crop species for food and agriculture. For example, we have a very large number of germplasm mm -hmm. of rice, which constitute by itself about 1 lakh accessions mm -hmm. out of uh, about 4 lakhs. Mm -hmm. And then we have got about 55,000 belonging to different pulses, which is a very important source of nutrition and protein for the Indian vegetarian diet. And also we have equal number of about 55,000 accessions belonging to different oil seed groups like mustard, groundnut, etc. Then equally we have a large number in different fruits and vegetable crops. Mm -hmm. Like we have for total category of vegetables about 24,000 accessions. Mm -hmm. And like that we have stored in this National Gene Bank in the form of seed. You know, all these accessions in different lines mm -hmm. of these agri-horticultural crops in this National Gene Bank mm -hmm. over and above you know, as I mentioned before, four lakh accessions, mm -hmm. which makes us the largest gene bank in the world after US and China. Absolutely. And apart from this conservation here in the form of seeds, we do have the conservation facilities, you know, created at this NBPGR Absolutely. at the national international level, which is recognized mm -hmm. in the form of, you know, like pollens or buds mm -hmm. for many of these horticultural crops in liquid nitrogen in cryo tanks, mm -hmm. where the temperature is maintained as low as minus 196 degrees Celsius. And in addition to this, also we have stored, conserved, many of these plant genetic resources of mostly again horticultural crops mm -hmm. in the form of tissue culture plantlets. About 40,000 such samples have been uh, conserved in the form of these tissue culture plantlets, you know, in, in NBPGR. And uh, how, how this entire, this, uh, this wealth of germplasm has been collected over the years? Who, who are the agencies who have collected it? You know, are they yes. Collected? What we have here in this National Gene Bank, of course, is an outcome of the collection efforts by all scientists. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a whole division here, you know, under the name like Division of Germplasm Exploration and Collection. Mm -hmm. You know, so our scientists, you know, from that division and from other divisions, with the help of other, you know, specialists of a particular crop, be it, a, you know, field crop or horticultural crop, they go around the country and collect this germplasm you know, and bring it to this, you know, institute here, mm -hmm. where it is then processed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as per the international standards of FAO, mm -hmm. before it is conserved, you know, in the form of seed, or in the form of, like, as I said before, you know, cryopreservation or, or in vitro conservation. So all these different forms of conservation then are taken into account, and after this material has been collected from diverse locations within the country, you know, by our experts, uh, again, in collaboration with specialists of that particular crop. Mm -hmm. And also we have collected germplasm or introduced germplasm mm -hmm. in India from various other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, NBPGR was instrumental in bringing, you know, kiwi fruit to India. Kiwi fruit, okay. you know, as a crop which is now grown in the, you know, temperate regions of our country. In our original station, Shimla, this was in fact established first and it is now going around the whole, you know, commentary and getting good commercial, you know, as a good, good commercial product. So this is the way that we collect from within India or outside India from different institutions, like from different, you know, we have got international agricultural research centers, like we have an international center on wheat, you know, in Mexico, or like we have international research center on rice, mm -hmm. you know, which is in, you know, Philippines, you know, similarly, we have got, a, you know, international center for dry areas, which is, you know, in, in Syria and other parts of the of the world. So from there as well, you know, we have collected the material, we have brought it here for the benefit of Indian agriculture so that we can provide better varieties, you know, um, through our breeders, you know, to, to, to our farmers for increasing pro crop production. We can say that you are the custodian mm -hmm. of the biodiversity in a sense, basically. And, yes. And we need not be worried that there are a lot of concerns in various quarters that we are losing biodiversity because of the... We, we, we are losing biodiversity from the sense 
that it is not being now further grown as much by the farmers. You know, because these land races, these primitive cultivars, which earlier the farmers were growing, mm -hmm. now they have been replaced by high yielding varieties. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, those land races or obsolete cultivars, which were at times grown by the farmers, have been collected from the farmers' field mm -hmm. and brought it to the National Gene Bank here. So we will not say that the biodiversity has been lost. The biodiversity which was available in the farmers' field has been collected, mm -hmm. has been conserved safely here in the National Gene Bank. Mm -hmm. At the same time, farmers are now able to grow high yielding varieties to which is more remunerative, you know, get better price and is able to produce more, you know, for the nation. I mean, as a result, that's why we have today been able to, let's say, um, produce about 260 million ton, you know, of food grain production here in the country, you know. So I think uh, it's not right to say that we have lost. Yes, you can say there are cases wherein because of urbanization or because of other natural, you know, factors or calamities, you know, some kind of biodiversity in a particular region is getting lost. But at the same time, we must please appreciate that those, you know, agrobiodiversity from that region has been already collected. That's the advantage of having a national gene bank of this kind. And that's what Bureau here under the bigger umbrella of Indian Council of Agricultural Research mm -hmm. has been doing this excellent job. You know, over now, you know, many, many years, this institute, uh, the Bureau was established in 1976. Mm -hmm. So since then, you know, uh, we have been instrumental. Even before that, before the institution came into being as a full-fledged institute, the activity was carried out by late Dr. Harbhajan Singh, in fact, who is a pioneer worker uh, who was in India, mm -hmm. whom we also call it as Vevilov of India, because Vevilov was a world-renowned you know, person, a scientist who was able to start and appreciate, you know, the collection of uh, germplasm, you know, fr from Russia, from uh, different parts of the world. So that's what, uh, you know. But recently you, you have done uh, some uh, developing a core out of the germplasm. Can we elaborate on that? What, what right. it means? Basically? See, basically the purpose is, as I said before, mm -hmm. that we collect all this germplasm mm -hmm. from within the country and outside in the country and bring it and conserve it here, mm -hmm. you know, for the posterity, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so that we don't lose it altogether from our planet Earth as a whole or from India, you know, mm -hmm. as we talk about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it is important that we identify what is the worth of these genetic resources, mm -hmm. you know? Or in a way, we call it as we study it in the field conditions, we characterize it, we evaluate it, mm -hmm. you know, and identify which are the good traits, mm -hmm. you know, which we would like to incorporate in our today's you know, high yielding varieties. Mm -hmm. For example, if I'm talking of a high yielding variety in wheat, you know, but it is susceptible to rust, then I go back to my gene bank, mm -hmm. I try to bring out those, you know, different taxations of wheat, grow them in the field, in the hot spots, wherever the rust disease will appear most, and, you know, then select and, you know, screen that material. If I find something useful for resistance to that particular rust, for example, yellow rust, you know, then I, you know, uh, invite our wheat breeders you know, to the field, they will select it right there, any genotype which they find is resistant to the rust, and then they use it as a donor parent in their breeding programs, mm -hmm. you know, to incorporate oh, that particular gene into those high yielding varieties of wheat which were otherwise susceptible. So therefore, there is a, there is a continuum here, you know, that we continue characterization and evaluation, you know, of this germplasm right under field conditions mm -hmm. in collaboration with our national partners. Mm -hmm. National partners, I mean those ICR institutes, mm -hmm. you know, which are working, you know, in, in different crops. Like we have one on wheat, we have one on rice, we have one on cotton, we have almost on all crops, mm -hmm. you know, some of these institutions. So in collaboration with those institutions, in horticulture, we have one in Bangalore, we have one mango in Lucknow, we have vegetables in Varanasi, we have potato in Shimla, you know, like that. So in collaboration with those institutes, all this germplasm mm -hmm. is then evaluated right under field conditions and, and they you know and then some of the donors which are identified, that material is then shared with the breeders, you know, for developing these high yielding varieties or varieties which can, you know, fight resistance or, or diseases, you know, which are resistant to various, you know, diseases or to, you know, climatic factors, you know, like, uh, you know, drought or high temperature, etc., etc. And uh, the point which you just asked, in fact, if I may elaborate a little more mm -hmm. on wheat, you know, where, wherein we, for the first time, particularly, you know, for identification of uh, accessions or lines of wheat, which can tolerate terminal heat stress, mm -hmm. you know, we, we undertook this mega experiment, wherein, you know, we took all the accessions available, almost all, uh, in running into 22,000 accessions, 
you know, of wheat and, and planted them at single location, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, in fact, I'm happy to share with you that also been taken up as an entry by the Limca Book of Records. And, and, uh, and we, we are happy to share with you that we got some excellent material, you know, which has got uh, resistance to terminal heat stress, not only to terminal heat stress, which is otherwise a problem with the rising temperature, you know, particularly in the northern plains here where, you know, most of the wheat is grown. Uh, and uh, but also we have been able to identify lines uh, which are showing resistance to to multiple rust diseases, mm -hmm. now, which we are further characterizing it. We have developed a core in the sense, you know, out of the total number of fixations, 10 percent of it, you know, we have been able to capture about 80 to 90 percent of the genetic variability mm -hmm. into this small number, you know, of about two to three thousand fixations, you know, which is now available, you know, for our, our researchers in the country, you know, um, for for various purposes for, for developing you know, high yielding, resistant to climate change, resistant to diseases, you know, these varieties can be developed using but this material. But you said that most of the materials has to be shared with the public sector institutions. But is there any protocol which, which, which allows you to share it with the private sector institutions? We are developing guidelines in fact. We are developing guidelines and I am happy to tell you um, that ICAR in the last about two years you know, has taken some concrete steps, you know, uh, towards this, you know, towards this. And we have one now, um, you know, National Advisory Board on, on Management of Genetic Resources mm -hmm. under the chairmanship of Dr. Aras Paroda mm -hmm. and the co-chairmanship of, you know, Dr. S. Ayapan, who is our Honorable DG and Secretary, you know, today. And uh, so we have this National Advisory Board uh, and that, uh, under that National Advisory Board, we are trying to develop with the guidance from this board, you know, where we have all other important, you know, personalities dealing with plant genetic resources or other genetic resources as, as members, and when we are we are working towards that. And lastly, you have been focusing on the 15 crop essentially categories of crop. We, in fact, are focused because you know, as you can uh, see, that in ICR we have brought up a system we call it as prioritization, monitoring, and evaluation. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on it. Mm -hmm. You know, so while we have been able to store and conserve uh, the accessions of about one and a half thousand species, but when we talk of prioritization, out of these one and a half thousand species, primarily for meeting our daily needs of mm -hmm. food and energy, mm -hmm. you know, we have therefore done an elaborate exercise and identified 15 crops as prioritized crops, we call them, you know, which include like wheat, rice, maize, sorghum, Pearl millet, mm -hmm. you know, then uh, chickpea, pigeon pea, you know, uh, then we have got uh, mustard, mm -hmm. then we have got, you know, um, like brinjal, okra, citrus as a fruit, banana, mango, melon, mm -hmm. etc., etc. And which, in fact, you know, these 15 crops will constitute about 60% of our total, you know, capacity of the number of accessions we have in our gene bank out of 4 lakhs, you know. So this is what exercise we have done. You know, like we have prioritized there for these 15 crops, you know, so that we can undertake a complete characterization and evaluation studies on these and develop a code, as I mentioned before. And then that code becomes available to, to all of our breeders, you know, for the utilization in their breeding program. You know, the point is we would like to promote utilization of the material, Absolutely. you know, stored in our gene bank. Mm -hmm. And utilization is becoming more important for various reasons, you know, that we would like to continue increasing our agricultural production, particularly when there are so many challenges being faced by agriculture. Mm -hmm. For example, climate change is one of the biggest challenges we are facing today, mm -hmm. you know, in, you know in, in, the, in the world, but of course in India. So, you know, land resources are degrading. Water availability is, you know, shrinking. Mm -hmm. So now it becomes more important that we go back to the gene bank, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we try to utilize this material, you know, for, in, for developing those, you know, climate smart, you know, varieties, you know, for and making our, you know, small farmers as, you know, uh, as smart farmers, you know, also for, for you know, able to grow, uh, you know, those, those, you know, varieties with high production, you know, levels and in a sustainable manner with, with minimal input, okay, of uh, these natural resources. So we're trying to increase, you know, uh, you know, the efficiency of agricultural production as such, you know, with, with the input from these genetic resources by using those genes, you know, which are logged up, which are available, you know, in plenty in, in the material which is conserved in our national game. And l lastly, uh, can you elaborate on the, what will be the focus in the next two years, suppose, next two to three years? In fact, you know, we are now in the next two to three years means we are in the middle of uh, almost our, you know, 12th plan. 12th plan. 
and uh, as per the directive we have received from uh, from the council uh, we have identified some of the flagship programs mm -hmm. and, and also we have some we call them as consortium research platforms identified mm -hmm. and uh, so what NPPJ has taken a lead in, in developing uh, agro biodiversity platform you know at a national level mm -hmm. wherein the, the focus would be on, as I mentioned before, in collaboration with our all national partners, which the number today runs up to about 80, you know, depending upon different crops, you know, be it horticultural crops or, or you know, cereal crops or vegetables or oil seeds, etc. You know, in collaboration with those 80 partners, we're trying to characterize entire jam plaza, you know, and we're trying to evaluate the jam plaza, you know, so that, and then, we have made a kind of a value chain, you know, that down the line we are able to make this material available to the breeders and those breeders, we encourage them, you know, to use this in their breeding programs, you know, to broaden their genetic base. That's also important. You know, like we sometimes worry about if there is a disease, you know, so if and the, there is a narrow genetic base, then the whole crop is going to get devastated. Mm. So we want to increase this genetic variability even at the farmer's level. You know, by broadening the genetic base, you know, of some of these varieties which are otherwise high yielding, you know, but they produce more in a sustainable manner with more efficient utilization of the natural resources, etc., etc. So that's going to be our major focus, in fact, in the next two to three years. And not only this, uh, you know, with the technology now available of genomics, mm -hmm. we are able to move to creating kind of a DNA bank, mm -hmm. you know, identification of those genes and alleles. You know, so that by combining the power of genetic resources on one hand and the genomic tools on the other hand, we can really, in a possible, shortest possible time, we can try to identify, uh, you know, and there's a whole focus we have here at NBPGR in a division of genomic resources, you know, to take up this kind of work and, you know, so that we can then move on, you know, using these latest tools of biotechnology also, you know, to improve upon crop plants, you know, through our, you know, breeders and molecular